Well, elsewhere in Plymouth, neither of the two largest parties were able to win enough seats for a majority there, meaning that the city stays in no overall control for at least another year. Labour and the Conservatives will fight for power over the coming weeks, but it was the newly elected councillors who provided the biggest stories of the night. Well, Sam Blackledge is live in Plymouth for us this evening. Sam, a hung council there, but plenty of talking points. Well, yes, that's right, Ellie. I mean, say what you like about local politics, but here in Plymouth, it's certainly rarely dull. The city came into this election with the council really on a knife edge. Not much to choose between Labour and the Conservatives. And all the talk before the election was about whether one of those two parties would gain an overall majority and would get enough votes and enough seats to take control of the council. In the end, not much change. We're still left with a hung council, nobody in overall control, and that will all be thrashed out over the coming weeks. But it was a historic night for the city and a very, very good night for one individual in particular who is now preparing for his new life as an elected politician. The morning after the night before, and Dylan Tippett still can't quite believe what happened. The 21-year-old is the first openly transgender councillor ever elected in the South West, and it's being hailed by many as a watershed moment. I didn't quite realise how much of a big deal it was until I saw the response of the trans community locally and across the whole of the far southwest this morning. I've had messages of people saying to actually see someone like them in public office is just incredible and they never thought that the day would come. Yeah! This was the moment Dylan's victory was confirmed, the first time Labour have ever taken the formerly safe Tory seat of Compton, the significance bringing some party members to tears. The law student says he feels well prepared for any hate or abuse which might come his way. Coming out was the scariest thing I could have ever possibly done. I knew coming out to my parents would be a really difficult thing and it didn't go to plan and I haven't had contact with them for many years now. So if I can get through that, I know that I'll be able to deal with a few people that unfortunately can't open their hearts to something that they haven't heard about before. It turned out to be a night of firsts in the Life Centre's vast sports hall. Ian Poyser disrupting the usual sea of red and blue rosettes with a touch of green. But some things never change. By the time all the votes had been counted, Labour and the Conservatives were still deadlocked. 24 seats each, short of an overall majority. Obviously, the maths are not entirely with us, so we have to reach out and we have to build partnerships with people that are not in the Conservative group. I'm really optimistic about continuing in this role. If I don't, then I wish whoever does the, the, the best, because it's a fabulous role. It's a real privilege to be leader of Plymouth City Council. But Labour's veteran leader, Tudor Evans, who has fought more election battles than most, is in no mood to give up. For the last year and a half, we've had this farrago of Conservatives falling out with each other. And that's got to stop, because that sort of instability is no good for the city at a time of crisis. So after another long and compelling night, the leadership of Plymouth City Council remains unclear. This strange political city, which always seems to attract a certain amount of drama and intrigue, will now enter into another period of intense negotiation and backroom deals to see who will now take charge? Sam Blackledge, ITV News in Plymouth.